Okay, Ruiz, I will, I think, um, begin with uh, biomedical and uh, health informatics, and then move on to uh, um, talking about, uh, uh, you know, a university as a, a place of work. Um, so just give me, bear with me for a minute till I get my screen. So the audience, please remember, Professor Dishanak is talking on two topics. So uh, please note your questions and send it by chat. Uh, we will have a look at it. Over to you, Okay. Um, I'd like to first talk about uh, biomedical and health informatics because uh, that is a new um, a speciality. And uh, for the uh, doctors, one of the things that they may want to know uh, is that uh, uh, biomedical and health informatics was... Uh, made a specialty first in the USA in 2011. And um, Sri Lanka was actually the second country in the world to make biomedical and health informatics as um, a medical specialty. So this is something that um, Sri Lanka has pioneered. Even in the UK still today, you can't become um, board certified bio inf uh, uh, biomedical and health informatician. Um, so there's a little bit of a history and a background. Uh, uh, Sri Lanka, actually it was the Sri Lanka Medical Association which uh, uh, got uh, health informatics, biomedical and health informatics going. Um, and uh, that was me a long time ago uh, at the founding meeting uh, as a young doctor. Um, uh, and uh, so we have been able to develop and nurture this speciality and take it forward, not only locally, but globally. Uh, at that time, there was lack of awareness about the potential benefits of ITC in the uh, ICT in the delivery of healthcare services. But today, you know, it's a uh, it's a completely different story. Um, uh, Dr. Ruiz Hanifa uh, and I, we are you know going to even pioneer a clinical appointment uh, starting very soon, uh, completely done on um, uh, a virtual platform for our students. Um, I don't want to take the <laughs> thunder out of you, uh, Ruiz, but just to preempt that. Um, so in fact, even WHO was behind Sri Lanka. It's WHO resolutions on e-health came uh, seven years after the SLMA pioneered uh, this um, as the Health Informatics Society. And in 2007, we co collaborated with this group of people. They are the global leaders in uh, health informatics uh, from the University of Oslo, who were leading these efforts. And um, we uh, began on a journey in Sri Lanka of producing a generation of leaders in biomedical and health informatics with expertise in both the health domain and the ICT domain who can spearhead the development of ICT in the healthcare services in Sri Lanka working with and under the guidance of decision makers at the highest level. And we've been uh, successful in that. So in the uh, PGIM, uh, we have a specialty board in biomedical informatics, uh, which has been uh, chaired by me for uh, since uh, almost its inception in 20, uh, uh, 20, uh, um, uh, 2008 and um, uh, barring for a few years. And then of course we collaborate uh, heavily with the University of Oslo and other global partners now and the Health Informatics Society of Sri Lanka. And as you know, the doctors come from the Ministry of Health. So uh, the doctors come, with, come to us, they uh, go through a selection examination. Any doctor from, um, uh, with any background can come. Uh, they do a master's with us. And uh, then at the end of the master's, they become medical officers in health informatics in the Ministry of Health. Then they do another selection exam. They enter the MD program. At the end of the MD, there is, of course, a senior registrar period of local and foreign training. And, the for, uh, and then uh, you end up with board uh, certification in health, uh, uh, um, board certification in health informatics as a specialist. So you become a board certified health informatics specialist. That's what you become. Uh, we've um, 
you know, our program is uh, streamlined to the extent that even the foreign training happens at uh, University of Southampton in a hub, uh, which we call the Commonwealth Center for Digital Health, which was again founded by us from Sri Lanka in the UK. Now we have a hub in the uh, University of Southampton led by Professor James Batchelor. Um, and these, were, these are our, you know, uh, our uh, graduates going and working there. Uh, they become designated as Commonwealth Digital Health Fellows. They don't just have to go. But um, our uh, graduates now are in demand all over the world. Uh, uh, we have those going to Geneva, working with WHO. There are also those uh, working um, at uh, CDC. Uh, you would have heard of the CDC in Atlanta, USA. Uh, there is a Digital health, uh, Public Health Informatic Fellowship there. And uh, in the past three fellowships, uh, out of mm, eight fellows that they uh, take globally, one has been one of our Sri Lankan, uh, uh, Sri Lankan biomedical and health implementations. The uh, special thing about our program is there is room for innovation, what we call frugal innovation, low cost, highly effective, scalable and sustainable innovation which is developed on open source platforms using open standards, making, make, uh, meeting local needs that are custom built and interoperable and the Ministry of Health owned and maintained. And that's been um, the cornerstone of our, um, the speciality of biomedical and health informatics because our aim is to um, build digital health solutions um, uh, by the health professionals themselves in partnership with the uh, ICT community. Um, and we want our biomedical and health implementations to lead this process because digital health or e-health is a tool which should be used appropriately because our aim is health and not digital health. Now, uh, give, let me give you some examples of the kind of innovation that uh, you are able to do. So, you know, we know that amongst you, there are people who have creative abilities, innovative abilities, and uh, that's what we are trying to foster through this course. Um, and here in 2010, two of our graduates came to us and said, uh, two of our trainees came to us and said, mm, uh, uh, you know, the annual health bulletin, uh, is so old that the data coming uh, is so very old um, and uh, we can completely digitize this um, and so annual health bulletin is the document that gives the health status of Sri Lanka and that uh, entire data flow for that was on the indoor mobility and mortality reporting system which was completely made electronic by two of our graduates and uh, they took it through all the way. And Buddhika Dayaratna, some of you who are working in hospitals may know he's the only doctor in Sri Lanka, has gone to all the hospitals in the country, uh, as far as I know, because he's implemented this system in every hospital. And the bottom line was uh, we went in 2010 from record rooms with all of these uh, piles of paper to now dashboards in the ministry. And um, uh, we've got um, uh, real time data uh, for our country. And of course, uh, although they are even in the context of COVID, people are shouting and saying various things, but there is actually real time data um, uh, coming from hospitals in the ministry. And the ministry knows what they're doing because of this um, uh, system. So you don't really need to. When we were students, we used to go to record rooms and get, uh, get go through these and uh, do audits and uh, you know go and present at conferences. Nowadays, you don't need to because all the data is digitized and electronic. And there are millions of millions of data records that are available. This is uh, data which is a bit old, but now there's more data than this in the Ministry of Health system. Another example, um, Arwes, just um, tell me on time. Um, yeah, OK, OK. You yeah. have enough time, Vajra, don't worry. Uh, the, uh, another example, uh, the, you may know that we have a nice data flow in our maternal and child health program in the country. Uh, one of our graduates uh, completely digitized this. Uh, in, uh, he gave the leadership and all the others got together. And today we've gone to uh, various levels uh, of uh, even the data coming from uh, uh, pregnant women and children uh, 
uh, being captured now uh, in the smartphones. That was going to be implemented before the COVID, but with COVID, uh, things have got delayed. Uh, we've got now thousands and thousands of records of all the women uh, and children in the country at any one time. Um, uh, all the pregnant women, more than 400,000 of them, uh, all the children under five years, uh, you know, that's about 1.5 million of them, and all the school children data are reported through this system and uh, covered uh, in the entire country. So uh, that's the kind of transformational change that have been brought about. Another one, uh, we want to monitor our children for their nutritional status and one of our graduates produced this uh, app, which is uh, now, uh, which was monitoring children. And um, uh, it, uh, this particular app, um, uh, you know, goes down to granular level and you can really um, monitor children in the community. And um, uh, this uh, innovation won the first prize in the World Summit Award, which is the Global Innovation for Digital Health from submissions coming out of 178 countries. So that's the kind of global level at which our graduates have been working on. Um, you will also be, those of you who are working in hospitals, may be familiar with uh, the HIMS system, which is being rolled out. And that's a complete innovation by another one of our graduates. Um, and uh, um, so uh, that's, uh, so Sri Lanka's Ministry of Health uh, we are not going behind uh, vendors and spending a lot of money uh, buying software systems because we've got our in-house systems developed by our own graduates, but taking the ownership and taking them forward. And that's the, um, and uh, so this is uh, a picture a couple of years ago of a lot of our graduates getting together at our annual conference. But the bottom line is the sky is the limit. So if you are interested in uh, looking at what you can do, I refer you to this paper, which is uh, available free and open source, where we documented on the invitation of the World Health Organization, what our graduates are capable of. And today, uh, the world is looking at, uh, if you look at the guidance and leadership given by the WHO, a complete strategy on uh, uh, digital health to digitize health systems. And um, uh, so the opportunities are endless. Opportunities are in this country and globally. And um, you can uh, be a global leader in uh, biomedical and health informatics uh, if you grow, go through our program uh, and you can um, uh, you know, have a rewarding uh, future, a rewarding career and satisfaction of having innovated and implemented something which is transformational um, in our health system and which have um, made a difference to the lives of um, uh, people. So with that, thank you very much. I'd be happy to answer any questions if you do have about- uh, yeah, Bajira, there is one question for you. Mm -hmm. uh, can I just read it out? Yeah. May, may I please know if exemptions from modules offered for doctors are also who have completed the bachelor's in IT from the University of Colombo to enter this course? Um, no, we don't uh, give any exception, exemptions, um, you know. Currently, as, uh, those are very rare and far and rare between, uh, uh, but uh, um, no, not really, we, ha we right. haven't. But if you so, have a background like that, uh, it'll be very, very um, helpful. Uh, it'll be very, very helpful, yeah. There's one more question. Is a master's in biomedical informatics from the PGIM on equivalent master's degrees uh, equivalent to enter the MD program? Yeah, uh, we've um, actually had no one. Uh, He's asking uh, whether you can directly enter the uh, Yeah, there, you... is a, uh, there is a provision, but we haven't uh, really had anyone uh, applying on that. So all those who have been applying uh, to our program has been those who have got a um, uh, got the masters. Mm -hmm. You got the question? Yeah. Uh, I saw that question coming up again. Like uh, there is a provision for an, uh, for us to uh, um, recognize an equivalent um, um, uh, masters uh, from any other university. But uh, as I said, uh, no one has uh, actually so far applied to us um, using that. Yeah. 
somebody wants to know how many are taken a year into the MSc and MD. Yeah, we uh, we take up to thirty to the MSc and um, uh, twenty to the MD. If so, what are the eligible foreign universities? Uh, there is uh, um, uh, no uh, no list as such uh, because we'll have to look um, because uh, you, you know you cannot really know there are so many there will be uh, thousands of courses in the world, right? Um, so we can't spend time evaluating courses, um, uh, but uh, you need to um, you need to. Uh, uh, present the evidence to us and then we'll uh, evaluate it. And if the course content of uh, uh, masters that you have followed uh, is um, compati comparable with our masters, then we'll uh, be able to uh, take you. Okay, Vajra, well, I'll keep an eye on the chat for you. May I invite you to uh, proceed with the university uh, component of your talk today? Uh, Okay, um, right. Uh, let me move on to the other part. I see a question about uh, um, whether it's uh, essential to, um, you know, again, uh, you know, knowledge, uh, computer knowledge uh, before entering the course. I think uh, this day and age, everybody has some computer knowledge, right? <laughs> so uh, <laughs> if you don't have computer knowledge, you are a, a, you know, a museum specimen, right? <laughs> so, so the computer knowledge that we all have uh, is sufficient to start off. Um, and that would be enough. You don't need to have a degree in computers to get into uh, uh, the masters, okay? <laughs> 